Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So for this one, um, I just wanted to do a little tribute to the fact that as of last week, we're now at over a thousand subs. And since I'm not really a YouTuber and I'm, I'm not really on social media that much either, I wasn't really sure um, what, to, what to do to celebrate. But what I figured I'd do is do a follow up to the original video that was posted on this channel, which was some avid features that you may or may not know of. Uh, there was a number of Avid editors who saw it, um, some who had been using Avid for a very long time, who found at least one or two um, features that they weren't aware of um, and, you know, uh, got something from that one. And it's still one of the most viewed videos on the channel. So with respect to that, I figured I'd go have a bit of a dig around and see uh, what other features that I could pull out, out of my bag of tricks, or Avid's bag of tricks really. Now these won't all be super secret features that no Avid user knows. I dare say that you'll know a number of them, but I've came across so many editors and assistants um, who didn't know at least several of these, and you know these have saved them considerable time once I showed them. Um, so I do think that they're worth pointing out, and just even as a little tribute to the guys over at Team Purple for uh, giving us this awesome toolbox um, to play in. So, let's get started. Right, so first off, I wanted to talk about reviewing trim mode. Um, so if you're in trim mode in Avid, um, you may or may not know um, that if you hit the spacebar, then it will do a little review edit of... Uh, the area where your trim is. And it will loop play that area so that you can get a quick preview um, of your trim before you make it. But did you know that we can quite easily set how long before and after the edit point Avid will play down on your review? If not, let me show you. If you go into your user settings and then come down here to trim, funny that, then the first tab you'll actually come up to here is play loop. And this right here we can set discrete timings for how long it's going to play before and after the cut. So if you might want more of a lead in, but you don't want to necessarily play on and on after it's done the cut, then you could add in more of a pre-roll. So you could say, you know, I want more five seconds, um, five and a half seconds here. And I'll do my post roll at just two seconds, 12 frames. So I'll hit OK on that and I'll hit play. So you can see it's jumped back a good bit further um, at the head but it's still going to go the same amount after the edit. I'm just playing loop. And there you have it. There you can set your custom loop um, for reviewing your trims um, as you're tinkering around the trim. But what if you want to do the same thing? You review an area of an edit, um, but you're not tinkering with any trims, you're not moving around, you don't need to go into trim mode. Well, there's a tool for that too. And this one is handily named Edit Review. Um, you can find this in the command palette, just under Play, um, right in the middle here up top. Um, now I have dragged and dropped it from here and just put it um, on top of my timeline since I've run out of keys on my keyboard to map it there. Um, and so now if we just jump to any point on the timeline, I'll jump to over this cut just for a change and hit our edit review. And you'll see that this one does more or less the same thing. It jumps back a bit and then starts playing. Um, but the difference with this one is it's not exactly gonna play in a loop. Um, it will jump back a bit and start playing um, until it gets up to where your playhead was. Um, and it will just keep on playing until you hit the button again for edit review. So if I just hit this again, it'll jump back again to that same point and start playing again. And every time I hit it, it's going to jump back and roll. Try just saving you a few keystrokes if you don't want to be like jumping back the, with the playhead um, to hit play at the beginning of the scene every time just hit your edit review button um, repeatedly. Now those of us that like to tinker with audio levels quite a bit you will be well familiar with the audio mixer tool. Uh, this one here you know we can group tracks together um, you know we, we can move the faders we can create discrete uh, separate uh, gang groups um, for different tracks um, you know for dialogue your sound effects and whatnot and it's a perfectly good uh, mixing tool. It's great. But what if you like to tinker with your audio down here on the timeline? Um, so I'll make this just a bit bigger just now so as you can see. Say we came down here and we enable a volume mode on this track. Um, and we, you, you know, you like to tinker with your sound by adding keyframes here. And just in general manipulate your audio here on the timeline rather than a, rather than a mixer. You like to keep your timeline up. Well, did you know that as long as you have a clip gain enabled here in the view, you can have a little mixer over here and that'll allow you to just have your own little audio mixer 
specific to not just that track, but that audio clip. You'll be able to raise and lower the gain, as I'm doing here, on a clip-by-clip -clip basis, right on the clip itself, without having to open the audio mixer at all. Let's solo the music track, just so we can, you know, demonstrate this a bit better. So I've soloed my music track, and you can hear it a bit there. Getting that drums, that percussion going. But if I wanted to raise that without going into my audio mixer, I could just click this little icon down here, come here and just raise it up. There we go. Now this might not be the best way to make all your audio adjustments if you're doing a, a proper audio pass in the timeline, but it's a handy nifty little way to make quick adjustments. Um, you know, if you just have to push something a little bit up or a little bit down, um, you know, when you're doing a sound pass. Um, particularly on sound effects, it can be handy. Now the next tool that I want to show in Avid that um, has always been here but um, doesn't get shown um, a lot in Avid um, is the dual split effect, which is just really useful, if, particularly if you're doing some effects work um, and you want to see, you know, the progress you've made. Um, you can just hit this dual split button right here and you can control, control which part of the frame it affects. But basically it's going to show you part of the frame with your effect done and part of it with it not. Um, so this is a screen insert here, um, and this is the burning box that appears as soon as I hit my dual split. And you can see I can preview the effect done and not done. And this might be particularly useful if I was trying to get the, the edges exactly right to see if that's fitting in. Um, I know it is, um, so that's fine. Um, but it's, it's a nifty little feature. Now, speaking of screen inserts and effects and such, um, did you know you can copy tracking data from one effect to another? Take a look at this. So say you're having to track the same object, the same you know plate um, more than once. So for example, I've got my base plate here in the bottom. It's got a little bit of shake on it. Um, above that, I've got my screen insert, um, just the image that's being inserted. And then above that, I've got a mask that's trimming it just to the edges of this monitor. Now I'm having to track the plate and the mask to the monitor. Now, if I only wanted to run that track once, I mean, this is a relatively short clip, so you know, running the track again wouldn't be too much of an issue. But if I was really feeling that lazy and only wanted to run it once, um, then I could open my uh, mask here, for example. Um, I'll click on my shape, bring up the tracking window. Um, and now I don't need to do any more tracking because it's already run the track, but I could right click here where it says point A and I can go copy enable track. So you just need to make sure your track is enabled, but it, it should be unless you've changed something. So I'll copy enabled tracks. Then I can come down here to my screen insert, go into the tracking tool here, and then get rid of the default um, tracker that's already placed in. And then just right click and paste tracks. Now, as soon as I do this, it's pasted in uh, the tracking information that I've taken from the mask and applied it here. So now I've got the exact same tracking data um, pasted over. Um, and for something like this, where we're tracking the same object, but one with a mask and one with a 3D warp, uh, this is really useful because it means you'll have the exact same track applied to both of them. You're not running a track twice where it may have a slight variance. So yeah, it's a really useful way to maintain your tracking. Uh, one thing to note is that sometimes when you do this, it will knock off uh, your uh, tracker here. So you just need to go back to position tracking and then just select the new tracking point that's been added. And then you've got a smooth track again. Happy days. Oh, also, while we're in Effect Editor, don't forget that if you go down too far of a rabbit hole of tinkering with stuff, um, so say scaling, and you've made it way too big, and you just want to start again and start over, a quicker way than actually typing 100 is just to do an option click on the toggle switch. If you do an option click on the toggle switch, it resets that parameter. And this will work on most parameters in the effect editor. Um, so here I've threw a, de uh, a defocus on, on this uh, screen insert. Just do an option click on it. And it's reset it to zero. It's not disabled it, but it's reset the parameter back to zero for us to start uh, configuring again. Can be quite handy if you've gone too far down a rabbit hole and you want to start again. Now, match frame. It's one of our favorite uh, functions with an Avid Media Composer, allowing us to very, very quickly find the source shot um, and load it into our source monitor. Um, as I've just done here. Um, and we can do that from anywhere in a sequence and jump back to the source shot. But did you know um, then this can actually work in reverse? 
Um, we can find a point in our shot, and if we know this is in the sequence, but we can't find exactly where, maybe it's a very large sequence, we can use reverse match frame. I've got it mapped here, and then I'll just click that, and it jumps to the same point on the sequence. All you have to do is make sure the sequence is loaded in your record monitor, and then you'll be able to reverse match frame any loaded clip that is in your source monitor to your sequence, so long as that shot and that frame that you're parked on does appear in your sequence. Oh, and while we're on the subject of match frame, have you ever wanted to match frame uh, a section of a shot, but when you match frame, uh, it adds an endpoint every time? Well, there is actually a way to do that. So say I was trying to get this marked region um, in my clip. Um, I could go to the head of this shot, do a match frame, then go to the tail frame, and if you hold Option while you do your match frame, it will match frame without adding a marker, as it's done here. So it's match frame to the same shot, no marker added, and then I could just hit an out, and that's me got the same marked region in the source as uh, what appears in the sequence. Uh, can be quite useful for logging and particularly for grabbing VFX plates and stuff like that. Now you may or may not have you noticed, I'm a Mac user, um, I do like my Macs, and one of the things that um, I really miss when I have to work on Windows about macOS is the ability to sort of browse my music and sound effects and quickly play them, preview them, um, without having to bring them into Avid, without having to open them in any application. I just select it and hit the spacebar. Like so. And this is how I like to find sound effects. I'll just park my finder window on my sound effects folder and then I can search for whatever sound effect I'm after. So say I want a laugh, right? There we go, there's, there's a cartoon laugh right there. <laughs> Bit crazy, but maybe that's what I'm looking for in that scenario. And then I would be able to simply drag that straight into my Avid bin and get cracking, right? And for a long time, I really sort of struggled if I go into a post house um, and they were on Windows um, and I wasn't able to use that workflow, that method. But Avid has the answer to this. Um, as of the last several versions, um, you know, ever since the new UI came out in 2019, we have had the source browser. And not everyone's taken it up, um, but it allows us some similar functions that we get in base level Mac OS, um, you know, to do it directly within Avid. So let me uh, demonstrate by doing the same um, sound effect search um, and preview just within Avid. So um, I've jumped to my RAID here. I'm going to go to my sound effects folder. And then I've got a search function done here. Now by default it's set to filter so it won't search, but you can change that by just clicking the little arrow here and change it to a search function. So I'm going to run the same search of laugh. Here, they've all come up here. And if I simply double click this um, file, it gets loaded in my source monitor for playing. <laughs> and bear in mind, it's not even in Avid Media Composer yet. Um, it's just playing it straight from the drive without any ingest or even a link. And I could do this with anything in this folder. <laughs> and if you're in frame view, they will often let you do it straight from here. Aye! Just using the J, K, and L keys, so you don't even have to double click. Um, <laughs> and this should function with any clip that Avid is able to link in, um, since it's using that same engine uh, as it does to link to be able to play it here. So let me grab some video and I'll, I'll show you it working with some video as well. See? Playing it just like we can and edit in the bin and stuff like that. It's nice and easy, and I rely on this insurance. feature quite heavily, as I've said, whenever I'm working on Windows, because I always bring my hard drive in uh, with all my sound effects, all my music and everything else that I'll need in the edit. And this allows me to still edit using the same workflow that I know and what I'm used to, um, even if I don't have my beloved macOS. Oh, and did you know, by the way, we can make the text in the effect editor a bit bigger? I only even realized this myself recently. I was nosing around the user settings, went into effect editor, and then you just click large text. Click that there, and you see in the background there, it's now significantly easier to read. So, ever since I discovered this, I like to just leave it on. It's nice. Right, now lastly, I just want to end by um, 
recapping the zoom controls for people because I noticed someone the other day scrubbing along like this and then using the slider to zoom in and out and then when they had to go to the end sliding this and then doing everything with the mouse um, and you know there's just a better way we can we can map to our keyboard to say zoom in and out zoom in zoom out uh, we can map to our keyboard um, show the whole sequence so it doesn't matter where you're zoomed into you can be zoomed all the way in looking at frames hit that you look at your whole sequence again and one of my personal favorites we can zoom into a region um, so see I've got these color coded here these are different scenes different groupings of parts of the film and so I can hit my zoom into region and then we just click and drag and we can select a portion of the timeline and then that's the portion of the timeline we're looking at. This is my favorite way to zoom in and out of the timeline and, and see stuff. Um, you know, if I want to work on a little section, I'll just zoom and highlight that exact section. Um, you know, even just, even not necessarily from, from the whole thing, but say, you know, I wanted to tinker with a color here. Um, you know, I would probably zoom into just that region and then work on it. So that it's stretched over the maximum um, space that I have available to view my timeline. You know, monitor space, I, I always find it no matter how much you have, it, it's always at a premium. Um, so utilize this, as much as you can um, everything that you have um, and help yourself get there a little bit faster by mapping these to keys. Now, unfortunately, you won't find these functions in the command palette, but you can just go to menu to button reassignment and then you'll find them down in the little fast menu down here at the bottom of the timeline under zoom. Zoom in to out, show entire sequence, zoom into region, or there's also zoom back to last view. So your last viewed zoom can hop back and forth between that. Um, I think these controls are also in the timeline menu up here. Um, you know, if you don't want to go to the fast menu, there they are there as well. So guys, that concludes this video for today. Uh, thank you very much again for getting us to 1000 subs. If you want to see just how far these videos have come, by the way, just in terms of, you know, pace and overall presentation, um, you'll be able to click uh, the link that's on the page just now to view the original first video of the Avid Assistant highlighting six Avid features that are really awesome and not everyone knows about. Um, you'll find it a good bit slower and the audio is not quite as good, um, but you know, it's, it's the one that started it all, so can't hate it too much. Thanks for watching guys.